we're gonna bleed the brakes on this. We're also gonna talk about why we do that, why it's important, how to do it, how you can do it, and uh, what it's gonna do for you. Let me get some stuff. Okay, have fun. Oh, oh, oh. We can get to all the bladers without pulling the wheels off. How? what are you doing? Stopping things. What are you doing? Filming stuff. Am I gonna be on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah! Oh, hey, Brian. That was exciting for you guys. That was what exciting. Are you guys doing? What are you doing? Should we roll this window down? Yeah. Do it, let, let's there. put this window down. There's air out here. Are you ready? There's literally like a hose right over there. I think I hit my head real hard. Didn't you put the air out here? I don't want to talk about it. Hi. Modern off-road cars, especially UTVs, keep getting bigger. I mean, bigger tires, bigger wheels, bigger engines, more horsepower, more speed, but what isn't keeping up is the brakes. And whether you're racing short course or you're doing weekends in the desert, you probably notice that over time, you'll kind of get some brake fade, the brakes don't work as good. This is because we're putting tremendous amounts of heat in the brake, heat in the brake, heat in the brakes, and that is causing the fluid in there to boil, shear, go bad, however you wanna say it. So one of the biggest things that you can do without spending a ton of extra money is actually bleed your brakes in your UTV on a regular basis. So today, we're gonna do exactly that, show you how to do it easily, and kind of walk through some of the benefits as we go through the steps themselves. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> now we might be a little bit biased, but I think this is the direction you want to go. This is going to be the simplest way to get your brakes bled. Do it by yourself, mind you. Now, if you've ever done any brake bleeding before, you know that a lot of times if you are doing the pump and hold method, that requires a friend or a spouse. And a lot of times that situation doesn't go so well. So on top of being a more efficient way, it also helps with relationships. We got this. Uh, we'll set this guy up. The kit comes with the bleeder. This one already has fluid in it because we were doing some photos. We like pictures. Oh, this is our catch bottle. Oh, the wrench is hung on there. This is a wrench that we're going to use to open that. And then we also got the syringe. And we're going to use the syringe to pull any extra fluid that is left over in the reservoir out so we can get the level back down to the max before we put the cap on and finish all this up, so. Everybody seems to really like the syringe. Syringe? Yeah, they, they like the syringe. Yeah, it, uh, it sucks. Nice. So, first thing we wanna do here is precariously balance it on the tire because that just seems like the right thing to do. We'll get a fresh, unopened bottle of brake fluid. Now this is important because this hasn't been exposed to the atmosphere, so it has not had a chance to absorb a bunch of water or moisture yet. So right now the fluid is as good as it's gonna get. Because this bleeder has a giant three liter capacity, there is no problem taking the whole bottle. And we generally overfill this. Um, the reason that we do that or put a little bit extra in beyond what you're gonna need for the brake bleed is that way you make sure that while you are doing this, you don't accidentally run out of fluid. If you run the reservoir dry, basically, if this starts pumping air and you're still bleeding brakes, you're gonna suck a bunch of air into the circuit and then all the work you've done is all for nothing and you gotta start over. So we add a little bit extra fluid here beyond what we're gonna need. That way we ensure that no matter how much we remove, we are gonna have more fluid left than we will need. So we're only doing this once. Every brake bleed starts at the reservoir. Players has theirs located way underneath here. Super easy to get to. Uh, there are two types in the modern player system since we're talking about this one. Um, the yellow cap, which is a little bit larger version and the black cap. So regardless of the model, if you look and you have the yellow cap for your reservoir, we have an adapter for that. It's a green. If you got the black cap, we got an adapter for that too. It's a red. So we're gonna grab the red adapter. This guy will thread on. That's green, by the way. This is a green adapter. You're gonna grab the green one. I, I just got word um, that this is now green. I have not been diagnosed colorblind, but that doesn't mean I'm not. So what's cool about pressure bleeding 
versus just a traditional pump and hold. In a pump and hold method, you would have to be able to access this reservoir with your brake fluid. So the brake fluid that I poured in here, you would have to devise some kind of system to continue pouring it into the reservoir as you bleed each one of these brakes so that you wouldn't run this drive. I don't know if you can see how tight this is. Like I can't even get my hand in here. That's not exactly the easiest thing to do. That is why it is so bitching when you have something that is just gonna push the fluid in there and maintain that level for you. So the next step this thing needs is shop air. Here it's also important if you're running your own compressor at home, you make sure you drain that compressor of all the moisture before you start. Uh, or if you have a shop um, that you have dryers in line, the drier the air that is entering the bottle, the better. That guy connects there. We are gonna open the ball valve to let the air into the bleeder, which is gonna push down on the fluid and it's gonna force the fluid up, out through the hose and into the reservoir, which is then gonna apply pressure to that fluid, which when I open the bleeder in the back right corner, is gonna push the fluid out there. All of that dirty fluid is then gonna leave into the catch bottle and we will repeat that process at each one of the corners, getting closer to the master cylinder each time. So right rear, left rear, right front, left front. And we can also monitor, or I should say monitor, we can also adjust the amount of pressure that we apply with the ball valve. So the pressure relief valve is tunable. You can see that in the instructions if you get one of these, but you can also do it on the fly here. This is important because if you're working on like an older car or something where you're worried about the integrity of the reservoir, you can keep the pressure lower than the max, which generally is like around 12, 14 PSI. Um, I always like to start out at a little bit less, make sure that everything's good and it's not leaking. And then I'll crank up the pressure once I start running and I know the whole system is, uh, is strong enough to be able to hold uh, the extra couple PSI. So without further ado, until it's naturally sitting where it's not gonna require. So I'll go go crank up the pressure a little bit. And what's really cool is I'm now not doing anything, but the brakes are still getting bled. And you can tell where you are at in the bleed per corner based on the level you see here. One of the other things you'll notice is as you continue to bleed, when you first start, especially a car that's got a lot of miles, the fluid that you're gonna see in here is gonna have a lot more of an amber or dark color to it. This one isn't nearly as bad as some of the ones I've seen. we will know each corner is done when that goes to this more clear fluid that's actually coming through here now. You'll actually start to see a separation in here too. If you got really, really bad fluid, as you get that dirty fluid, that's gonna come up and the clear fluid as it chases it out it's gonna start filling in here and you'll see a line where the clear fluid and the dirty fluid separate a bit as they stabilize. So it's pretty cool that all this is being done and I'm not having to do anything else. I know there's a ton of fluid in the reservoir for the brake cleaner up there. So now if I know kind of roughly what my volumes are after doing this a few times, I know that, oh man, I got a couple minutes here. I can go look at something else. I can check other components in the same area while kind of keeping an eye on this, but it frees me up to go do other things. And that's what's so cool. Okay, so when you wrap up the corner, tighten that guy up. No matter how you do it, you're always gonna get a little bit of fluid. Make sure to clean up the caliper and clean up the wheel. That way you don't collect any dirt on that moisture. Move to the next corner and keep doing what we're doing. Start this other one. Get the bottle positioned right again. Now we're bleeding on this side. All services are important, but if your brake fluid is 
is burnt or sheared, you lose the majority of your stopping power. And for anyone that's been in a high stress or a panic stop environment, or you know, you're know you out on the, even if you're not racing, you're out for a weekend and you're having fun and you come over a ridge and there's kids crossing the track, you need to be able to stop fast. If your brake fluid is messed up where it doesn't transfer that force from the master cylinder to the calipers and lock these tires up really tight, you're gonna increase your braking distance and that could be the difference between stopping just before the accident or creating an accident. This is just cheap insurance to make sure that everybody comes home safe and our vehicles keep functioning as they're designed. You wanna see some really bad brake fluid that just came out of my caliber? That's brake fluid? See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what it looks like when it gets Used real nasty. Be, yeah. What do they say? The, the cobbler's shoes in the mechanic's car? Look right here. That's nasty. This man has owned repair yeah. shops and owns automotive parts shops. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what brake fluid looks like out of a pre-runner. got really, really cooked on the last pre-run. And that's probably half my caliber O-rings and seals that are in there. But that's what it is, right? If, if you're doing a ton of performance stuff, and whether it's these or it's your car and you're running harder than the brakes can handle, you end up seeing it right here. That All the is, fluid. That is what you're looking at right yep. there. All the heat goes right into the brakes and that is not nearly as efficient because of the water content, the debris and all the other crap in it. It doesn't transfer the force from your pedal to your wheel. Okay, we shouldn't let this uh, hang out forever. We got other shit to do. So this corner is cleaned up. We've then doubled again the amount we had in here. Let's go up to the right front, keep this program rolling. With a lot of these calipers, they only have the one bleeder. If the vehicle that you're working on only has the one bleeder, like this one, many times you don't even have to take the wheels off. That means you don't even have to lift this thing in the air. You don't have to get out of jack. You, you do so little, the job becomes so easy because the way this works, it just starts getting rid of all the excuses to not do this on a regular basis. So we need to move this because this guy isn't in a happy spot. All right, we started bleeding there. We'll make note with the indicator marks on the bottle where the fluid was so that we know we are in fact moving fluid. What if it doesn't look like there's fluid flowing? It kind of has that, that sense to it, right? That's why we're using the indi indicator marks as a reference. So the way this works, because we're not using an excessive amount of pressure, the pressure's only like eight to 14 PSI. It's not gonna push this like a fire hose, but we do that on purpose because a lot of these reservoirs are not held onto the master with any kind of substantial bracketry. Some of them are just O-rings and just held in place by gravity. So if we apply too much pressure there, you are gonna blow all kinds of things apart. And it turns out because the brake lines are so small, you don't actually need a lot of fluid. Um, pressure, I should say. This line is actually larger than the inside diameter of most brake lines. So it's hard to tell that there's movement here, but if you look, when we started on this wheel, we were actually down here at 400. We're almost up at 600, so it's a little deceptive um, just looking at the hose, but we know we're moving a bunch of fluid based on the bottle. So we can see that we are nice and clear in the hose, and we can move on to the last wheel. There's that, quick cleanup so we don't leave a big old mess that's gonna collect a bunch of dust when we hit on the trail. Move it up! All right, last wheel. Break this thing loose. We can see that initial inrush so we know we got the bleeder open. And how long were we doing this? We 10 minutes? Yeah, like 10 minutes probably. I'm not sweating. I'm not dirty. I haven't had to lay on my back once. It really is that easy. It's something that you can do right before you prep your car to go out on a trip or right when you get home or in between walking into the garage at night and going and eating dinner. So that's what I really like is that it's just about making things as simple as possible. And that's kind of the goal with everything we do is how can we make a product that serves you with as least amount of effort on your end and as, do it in as intuitive way as possible. So, so we'll run this for like another 20, 30 seconds. That way we've kind of divided the bottle into, into quarters. Uh, once that is done, then we'll show you the last little bits with the syringe. 
I don't want this to be like super salesy, but it's hard not to kind of fanboy on how simple this is, especially for anyone that's had to struggle with friends or waiting on a spouse or, or all of the different things that happens and how long that takes. And then quite often you get done with 30 minutes or an hour's worth of work, you go out and drive the car and your pedal's still sponging. And you're like, ah, <laughs> now I gotta just do it all over again. There's some guys that, that never can get the bubbles out of the system. And a lot of that is because the way the lines route through the car, oh, we're just about finished up here. The way the lines route through the car, there's these high points where whether you're bleeding manually or you're using a vacuum bleeder, you just don't create enough pressure to get that air out. All right, that's done. We got more fluid here. We'll turn off this noisemaker. And I don't know how easy it is to hear, but that noise is the air that's constantly venting out of the pressure relief valve. That is completely normal and lets you know that the pressure relief valve is working. So no worries if your sounds like that. We'll disconnect the airline, unhook the bleeder from the car, disconnect the quick disconnect at the reservoir. Get this beast out of the way. Grab ourselves a rag or three. Cap just unscrews. So we want to suck this thing down until we are back at our max level. One thing that I should say, kind of important, is if your system didn't start at the max level before you started the brake bleed, there is a good chance that you either have worn brake pads or a potential leak in the system. So you should definitely check that out um, before going back on the road. So now we just wipe up the little bit of mess we made, fix up the big old yellow cap. Before you put these back in, this is actually a set of billows that we wanna return to its neutral position. That way as the brakes do wear and the fluid drops in the reservoir because it's filling the calipers because the pad material is being removed and the pistons are moving out more so the fluid's trying to go in there. This allows the reservoir to empty without allowing air to contact the reservoir. That makes sense? Basically this guy continues to drop and push out this way as that drops balancing the pressure in the reservoir without actually letting the fluid in the reservoir contact the air and absorb moisture out of the air. Basically make it look like that before you finish. Oh, okay. And that's all done. Should we do a quick once around? Make sure we haven't left fluid anywhere that's gonna collect a bunch of dirt or make some nasties later. Were you gonna ask me? I don't know. You, I thought you were, were you gonna say something? Uh, no, I wasn't gonna say You weren't anything. gonna ask me? I wasn't gonna, what, what was I gonna ask What me? it does? Oh, what does it do? What does it do? The brake bleeder? The brake bleed? What, what is, what did you say? Oh, I said, uh, what is, what What's does this do? What does this do for you now that we've bled the brakes? Gives you a hard pedal. Oh, nice. Nice, right? What was that? What was that? I mean, it's, just, it's like really, it's what we're all about. Do you want me to go get the fake tears? Yeah, did it? Nothing happened, huh? No. Did you pinch me? No. Okay, we'll work on that. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself to you? Chris, my you name is Chris. You want to tell us, you want to tell everybody to like and subscribe? Oh yeah. Like and subscribe. Let's say it one more time. What was it? Like and subscribe to AGM. Oh, perfect, thank you. All right, I'm going to clean up my mess. Okay, yeah, you, you should have probably fun. go do the same. I'm going to go, yeah. I'm gonna he's, go still, try he's still doing oh, it. Oh, yeah, he's still doing it. Tell him to leave a comment. Leave a comment. At ADM! <laughs> we can work cool. with that. Yeah, that works. <laughs> hey!